All right, we're gonna be talking about how to collect urine by cystocentesis today. So we'll be using an ultrasound to help guide our needle into the bladder. We want our patient to be in dorsal recumbency and something comfortable, whether it's a trough that has some cushion like this or a trough that has a blanket, um, but something that kind of helps keep them stable in that position. So what we'll be doing, we'll have our supplies here and prepared. And so we have our 3cc syringe with our one and a half inch long needle that is also a 22 gauge. And we have our alcohol here to wet down the area on the abdomen to be able to visualize with the probe. We want to make sure that we're wearing gloves as well to make sure that we help keep that procedure sterile. And so we want to make sure our patient is as comfortable as possible. And so what we'll do is we'll spray the area down that we want to be able to um, be able to visualize the bladder with the ultrasound probe, um, but also making sure that we're keeping that area clean by, before we start putting our needle into um, the skin into the bladder. So we'll go ahead and switch sides so I can be able to visualize what's happening on the screen with the ultrasound as well as being able to see where probe placement is and being able to place the needle. When you're performing a ultrasound um, guided cystocentesis, it's important to kind of note what you're seeing on your screen. So a lot of your ultrasound probes are going to have a notch and that's going to kind of indicate you want that part of the probe to be on the cranial pointed towards the cranial part of your patient. Um, and most of the time that is gonna be followed on your ultrasound screen with the cranial part of your bladder being towards the right side of the screen and the caudal part of your bladder or any anatomy on the left side of your screen. All machines are different, so you wanna make sure you kind of know this information before you start your procedure um, and making sure that you are understanding where you're looking at on the screen for where your needle is gonna be going into the bladder. And so we're going to use our alcohol to kind of soak the area down, helps to kind of put the hair down um, as well as give contact for the probe um, to be able to visualize our bladder. And so once we have our bladder in view, um, as you can see on the screen there, the dark area is where the urine is inside of the bladder. Then we want to make sure that we um, go ahead and get our syringe, take our cap off of our needle. So we will be putting our, making sure that our needle placement is about 45 degrees from where our probe is. And then we will advance watching our monitor, making sure that we can see our needle go into the bladder on the screen. And you can see right there, it kind of is gonna go through the wall. And then we will make sure to go ahead and pull up our urine that is coming directly from our bladder. You want to make sure that your hand is off the plunger when you're removing your needle. And you want to make sure to use some pressure. I'll use a probe until I can get my needle capped. And then I'll come back and put some pressure on. Then you always want to check after you've done a cystocentesis just to make sure that there's nothing, no free fluid kind of around that bladder, just as a precaution. So we'll check that bladder one more time and no free fluid is present. All right, so now that we've collected our sample, one thing that is kind to do for our patients is to dab off the alcohol from their abdomen, uh, making sure that we're kind of getting all that residue um, off of there just so they're not having to walk around all wet and smelling like alcohol. Um, and then after that, what we're also gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and um, place our urine sterilely, continuing to keep that sterile procedure done into our tube. So we have a white top tube here to be able to add urine to, um, and then also a new needle to change off of the needle from our syringe um, to make sure that we're keeping everything again sterile. So we also have um, alcohol soaked gauze that we're gonna just wipe the top of our tube off of, making sure that it stays sterile. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our new needle um, and make sure that that is ready so we can access that um, to be able to change. So we'll take our syringe, remove our old needle off, and then take our new needle and apply that on. And from this point, we'll go ahead and take our cap off. Okay, and so now we will put our needle into the top of the white top tube in order to collect our urine sample and allow that to kind of pull the amount that is necessary for that tube. Lay that down, and then we wanna recap our needle, make sure that that is not out to poke anybody. And so now we have our urine sample all ready to either run in-house or send out to the lab. 
It's important after you've collected your urine sample by cystocentesis that we then place that sample into our um, urine container tube. Um, and we wanna make sure that we do that, continuing that sterile technique. In order to do that, we have to remove the needle that we have used to collect that sample because it may have picked up some cells um, going into the bladder, but also possibly some debris on the outside of the patient. So we want to make sure we remove that needle and then place a new clean needle on the end of the syringe. And then that needle can be applied directly into the top of your urine tube. Um, to collect that the rest of that urine sample. And then after that is collected, we wanna make sure that we label that urine tube with the patient's first name, last name, the date, and also that it's a sterile sample collected by cystocentesis, um, making sure that you have all that information on there for the lab to send out.